I've been shooting weddings for about 10 years and only upgraded to mirrorless uh, last year. And the default settings, the default autofocus settings are not great. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the best autofocus settings you need to set when you're shooting weddings for the Canon R5 or R6. So let's get into it. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tommy Reynolds, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm a portrait wedding photographer and a photographic educator as well, based in South East England. And as I said in the intro, we're gonna be looking at the R5 and R6 in particular, because they both share the same autofocus system. So let me explain what I was using before. Um, as I said, I only upgraded recently, and up until then, I was using the Canon EOS 5D Mark III for this is 10 years old now this year. This has been a workhorse. And the only reason I upgraded to mirrorless was not because of the megapixels, was because of the uh, the autofocus system in particular. Uh, I got the R5 because I'm into video and I wanted the extra megapixels for, um, the, for, for some of the commercial work I do. But if you're only shooting weddings, then I think the R6 is perfectly fine. As I say, I didn't get it for the megapixels, not for weddings. I got it because of the autofocus because this is so much faster. So let's get straight into it. So um, I've got this monitor dialed up so that when I hit menu, it's gonna record there. Very fancy. Um, so if I just hit record here and then go to menu. So if we go to the AF menu, the AF operation is set to servo, not one shot. Um, because of the technology now in these mirrorless cameras, they're much better than DSLRs were in servo mode or AI servo. Um, so for that, it's on servo. So that just basically means when it's locked focus, it will stay locked in and then continuously focus whilst the shutter button is press half down. So that's in servo AF. So that's uh, helpful if um, someone's walking towards you and they will continuously be in focus. AF method, that's on single point. It's not on face detect and we'll get into why it's not on face detect at, um, at this stage. Just worry about having the AF method set to, I have it on spot AF so that it feels like a DSLR again. Subject to detect is obviously on people and continuous AF is disabled, mainly for uh, battery reasons. And also if you've got a, an older EF lens converted on there, uh, if it's by your hip, it's gonna be continuously focusing all day. So you might even hear it go v -v 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 -v, trying to hunt while it's down by your hip. That's no good, it's gonna eat your battery. So that is why it's disabled. Touch and drag. AF settings, um, I have it enabled. I don't really use it. Um, I'm I'm quicker at just using uh, the buttons on the back here and moving my AF point. That's where you can put it up to your eye and then you can put your thumb on the display and move it around. It's uh, It won't work while it's connected to this monitor, but I don't really use it, um, so I, don't, I wouldn't worry about that. So everything else you can leave by default. But I did speak about how I set the um, the eye detection to be back button focus. So we're gonna change that now. So for that, we need to go over to the custom menu. Uh, gonna go down to the custom buttons and we're gonna go down to where the back button focus would be. And we're gonna change that from, I, that may have been the default, but we're gonna move over to eye detection AF and we're gonna hit okay. So now, every time I hit the uh, back, button, back button focus and keep my finger on it, that will enable uh, eye detection. So we're gonna use this prop. Um, it's a Wallace and Gromit camera that I got when I was seven years old, and we're gonna use it. Um, it's literally the only thing I can find with a face on it. By default, my focusing system is on, um, I call it DSLR spot focus mode, if you like. So um, there's no face detection until I hold down back button focus. We can see it's focusing on uh, Wallace's eyes and it's holding that there because of the servo mode. If continuous AF was on as well, then this would just be trying to focus on whatever's in that square continuously. I don't need that because it will kill battery and you might just hear it and it'll just get annoying. Um, so that's why that's disabled. So if you're coming from a DSLR, you'll be well au fait with this mode, which is why it's like that by default and back button focus then enables the eye detection. So which means I don't don't need to, like I was doing before, hit the uh, menu function button, then go over to there, then we're good. I don't need to do that, so all I need to do is just hit a button, hold it down, that's it. Much easier and quicker than this. And you can see it's all, it always wants to focus on Wallace and not Gromit because the uh, AF priority is set to humans, not animals. Um, but you can change that back and forth if there happens to be a dog who's the ring bearer at a wedding, or you could set it to no priority, so it would jump between the two, but 
for the most part, I've just got it set to humans. Now I'm someone that shoots weddings with two cameras, so I have the R5 on one hip, and at the moment, I'm still using the 5D Mark III on the other side of the hip, um, but because they're different focusing systems, it can be quite jarring when I pick up the 5D Mark III and expect it to um, have the exposure simulation, which obviously it doesn't, um, or press down the uh, back button focus and no eye detection happens. So it's quite jarring jumping from a DSLR to a mirrorless camera so um, eventually I want to upgrade and get an R6 um, and this brings me nicely on to today's sponsor for this video which is MPB. MPB is the world's largest online platform for used photography and video equipment so whether you're looking to buy sell or even trade in your photography or video equipment give MPB a go. MPB were really kind enough to loan me a Canon R6 and a 50mm RF 1.2 at my last wedding, as you can see here. It was so great to have two cameras that had that same autofocus system, which meant that I didn't need to worry whether I picked the R6 or the R5 up. The autofocus was gonna be exactly the same. I dialed in the R6 to be the exact same as my R5, and it really has made me want to get another mirrorless camera to have on the other side of the hip. Every piece of kit is inspected carefully by one of their product specialists and comes with a six month warranty giving you total peace of mind that buying used doesn't mean sacrificing on quality or reliability. And before collaborating with MPB, I don't think I've ever bought a piece of used item. Um, I know the frustration or the worry that can happen or the anxiety that can happen with buying used equipment. There is always that worry of, is it gonna be what they say it's gonna be? Um, is it gonna be broken? Is it gonna be faulty? You're not buying it from a random person on eBay. They have specialists that inspect the kit so that you know that when you receive the kit, it's going to work and it's going to be as you expect it to be. So. It's definitely opened my eyes up to buying used kit, certainly from MPB, and yeah, I really want that R6 now. I didn't really want to give that back. But that's about it for this video, guys. If you liked it, if you enjoyed the behind the scenes segment, the brief behind the scenes segment in this video, or if you want to see any more tutorials about weddings in particular, the workflow system or the shooting in particular, Please drop your suggestions below what you'd like to see because I'm going to be doing a lot more wedding focus videos from now on as that is now more of my focus for this year and onwards. So if you liked it, please make sure you hit the like or share button or subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And as always, I will see you again next time. Cheers guys, bye bye.